आई एस आइजिक वीडियो संपादन को फिर से बनाए आई मीन लेट्स रिक्रिएट दिस आइजिक वीडियो एडिट सी गो वायरल लाइक आइजिक वॉच दिस शो यू दी एग्जैक्ट मैथड आई यूज टू मेक दम गो वायरल To start, we need some elements to work with. I created them for you in Photoshop. You can also create them in something like Photopia or Canva for free. I've included all of these elements along with some sound effects you might have a hard time finding. Link in the description below. I've also included a separate link with a hundred free Hollywood sound effects in case you didn't get them in my prior videos. So go ahead and pause right now and hit one or both of those links. And now let's jump into CapCut. The first thing we want to do is hit this modify button over here and change the frame rate to 60 frames a second because because that is the frame rate that Isaac uses. You don't have to do that. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to follow along with what Isaac did. Next, let's jump into the video folder and grab the edit of Isaac's that we're going to kind of try to emulate. Now notice that if I drag it here out of the way, it just it keeps snapping back over there. Ah, super annoying. What do you do? You just click this magnetic timeline icon here or hit the letter P. And now we can drag it out of the way to give us room to work. If we go ahead and look at Isaac's video, we see that it starts with a dark gray screen and he has some things popping up. And if we slow it down, we can see what each of these elements are. We're not gonna worry about the captions. I have other videos about that, but we have these boxes. We have text that's blurred on the boxes. We have text above the boxes. We have the arrows. So let's go ahead and start adding those elements one at a time. Now we need this dark gray background. So I created one for you called gray background. And we're gonna make it about the length that we're gonna end up with somewhere a little, you know, somewhere close to nine seconds. So I just dragged it out to there. Next, I've created these boxes here. Now these are gray boxes with a blank background. And you'll notice that I've got this gray that matches the gray inside the boxes. We're just gonna drag these on top here and make them the same duration by clicking and dragging here. And you'll notice that in Isaac's video, you've got all of this stuff moving together. So to simplify this in the way you would always do this, whether you're using CapCut or After Effects, is you create this as a still image first, then you animate it all together. So let's go ahead and work on these boxes first. You'll notice that Isaac boxes fade on from left to right. Look at this. They start like totally off and they start fading on from left to right. So let's fade them on over the course of about a second. To do that, I'm going to position my playhead at the beginning of the timeline and make sure that I have this graphic highlighted. I'm going to jump over here to video mask and choose horizontal. And now I'm going to flip it so that I can reveal what I want to reveal. There's nothing here. We're going to slowly reveal it from left to right. So I'm going to position this all the way over here to the left. And before I do that, this allows us to feather it so it's not a hard line. So I'm just going to click and drag that over and it feathers it. You can see how much in about 36 is probably great. Now we're going to drag it to the very beginning of this. And you can see that, you know, with the feather, we can see it a little bit showing up. And I'm going to set a keyframe for position position and then I'm going to move it forward about a second and you can see where we are when I drag this because there's the time code right here so I'm just going to position it here at about a second in and then I'm going to just move this to the other side all the way and it automatically added a keyframe and now it will reveal those boxes from left to right over the course of about a second next in Isaac's video we notice he has this text on top steps one through five so let's go ahead and add some text we're just going to jump over to text and select the default text drop it on on top, make sure it lasts the entire duration. Make it say step one. It's going to click on it and I can double click in here or I can go over to basic and type in step one. Let's make it a font similar to Isaac's. This isn't exactly his font, but if we scroll up to Roboto medium, it's pretty close. I'm going to scale it down and position it where I want it just over the box right here. And right there, let's go ahead and have a look. Just with this box around it, it's kind of hard to see. So I'm just going to click off. Now I can see, yeah, that looks about right. And what I want that text to do is to pop up over the course of, I don't know, about 10 frames. So I'm going to go forward about 10 frames by hitting shift and the right arrow on my keyboard that moves us forward 10 frames at a time. Now remember, we're at 60 frames a second to go a full second we'd have to hit that six times we just want to go 10 frames i'm going to click on it so i'm going to go to text basic scroll down to position and set a keyframe for position because i want to change the position over time and i'm going to go back to the beginning of the timeline and just drag this text down so it is under the box like this and right there is about right you know it's kind of hard to see because the box is starting to fade up but this should be about right 
Bam, pops up, looks great. I just need to repeat that four more times. To do that, I'm just going to click and hold down the option key and drag this guy up. Then it's gonna move it out of the way so I can see what's going on and it's not covering this one here. So over here I can see, okay, it's popping up and going into that place, but I want it in this box. And you might think you can just, oh, well, let me just move it over here. But you know, you might try that and you'll see that it does weird things. It added another keyframe, look what it does. No, that's not what I wanted. So what you need to do anytime you do something like this is make sure your playhead is positioned on the keyframe that you want to modify. I want it to start over here in this box and I want it to end up above it. So positioned here. So I'm just gonna start to drag it over here then hold down the shift key so it stays in a straight line and it's a little little cumbersome. You know, sometimes it'll drift a little bit. You might have to serve a couple times. And then it's like, oh, it's gonna start there. But what do you think it's gonna do? It's gonna end up over here. Watch. No, that's not what I want. I just needed to position my playhead on this second keyframe and then put it where I want it to end up. So I'm going to just start dragging it over as evenly as I can, hold down the shift key and hopefully it'll lock it into place there. And then bam, with these bounding boxes, I can see that I'm centered pretty well. And I'm just going to change that one to a two. And now I'm going to position it right next to this guy. And what do we get? One, two. They're both going up at about the same time, right? Which is fine, except that they're staggered a little bit in Isaac's video. So what we're gonna do is just drag this guy over about three frames. We got, let's go one, two, three, have this guy start here. And that way they start at different times and it's a little more interesting. And let's have a look at it. I'm gonna click off this so I don't have this bounding box, which is distracting. Position my plate at the beginning and yeah, that looks right. Now we just have to repeat that three more times. You don't have to watch. If you forget how to do it, just watch how I did it the first two times. Okay, I've got all five of those done. It looks like this. But you might notice a problem because if you look at Isaac's video, these graphics are popping up from behind that box. You don't see them down below. How do, how do we fix that like and easily? So first we're just gonna trim it off so they're not lasting any longer than they need to. I want all this stuff to be the same duration. So I'm gonna hit Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC. And then I'm just gonna hit Command B on a Mac or Control B on a PC to slice all of these guys right where the playhead is. And these are all highlighted. I'm just gonna delete, they go away. Now this stuff is all the same duration. And to make these guys not appear in the boxes before they appear up there, I'm just gonna highlight all of them, right click and choose Create Compound Clip. So now I can modify all of them together. What do you think I do next? Can you, can you figure it out? A lot of times you need to figure out a workaround when CapCut can't do exactly what you want it to do. Some things that might be a little bit different or possibly even easier in After Effects, you gotta kind of think outside the box a little bit. So to modify all these guys together, we just click on this compound clip. We select video mask and guess what we're gonna use? Horizontal. I want these guys to not be visible down here. So down here, for this text, this is all invisible. So I'm gonna drag this guy up just over this line here and watch what happens. Down here, you can't see, it's it's invisible. So watch this. <gasps> look at that, it's just popping up. And you get a better look if I just click off of it and get rid of that line, that line just for reference. And now look at this, huh. pops up like magic. Next, we're gonna put some text in these boxes. Just click on text, select the default text and make it last a duration of our little section here. Bam, that's perfect. And what do I want in here? Well, what do you want it to say? I'm just gonna go with five steps to make a viral video. So we're gonna start with identify niche. And I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna change it to a font that's gonna work better for us. How about Roboto Medium? And I'm gonna drag it down here and I move the playhead over so I can see where that box is and I just need to click and drag this guy over here scale it down so it fits inside there and it looks pretty good like that right and kind of center it I'm gonna do that for all of them since this one is already scaled and in at least the right Y position the up and down position I'm gonna duplicate that to do that I hold down the option key on a Mac the alt key on a PC and I click and drag this guy up and then bam we have another copy of it and I can just drag it over here and then type in the next words I'm going to go ahead and add text in the next three boxes. Okay, so I've added text in all five of these boxes, but I made a mistake and I'm leaving the mistake. I could have fixed it in the edit, but I just want you to see that sometimes I screw up too all the time. So I'm creating extra work for myself. What I need these guys to do is type on. So I should have added the type on animation to this graphic and then duplicated it and it would have been done already for the next ones. But instead I got to do it manually. So I'm going to click on this guy, the first one, choose text animation, make sure in is selected and scroll down to type two. It's free. It's a type on and it's going to, 
double click it. See that? I just made a mistake. I was like, oh, I'm just trying to drag it down there. You don't drag it. You you click it and it adds it to it. And I want it to be about two and a half seconds long. So I'm going to drag the slider over to two and a half seconds. And we can see that this guy types on slowly, similar to the way Isaac does it. Now I have to add the same thing to all of the text here. I just click on it. I click on type two and I just drag this over to, you know, two and a half seconds or so. And then I do it for the rest of them. Right now it looks like this, but you'll notice that in Isaac's video, those guys are blurry. And then at the end of the blur, one of the guys pops up and gets unblurry. How do we do that? Well, we're just going to plan for it before we blur stuff out. So it's just that first one. It's this guy. At around six seconds in, this guy goes from blurry to clear. How do we do that? And you got to think in advance and mess with stuff. And once you've done this a bunch of times, you'll go, oh, here's the workaround. Here's how to make that happen because it's not super obvious. You can't keyframe the blurs easily. So this is how you do it. We'll take this guy. We're just going to split him. Just going to hit command B on a Mac, control B on a PC, and I'm going to drag him up here. And I'm going to drag this guy over a little bit so it overlaps like this. And what's going to happen is this is going to be blurry ultimately. This identify is going to be blurry and this identify is going to be not blurry. So what I'm going to do is fade this guy out, even though he's not blurry yet, just, just trust me. And to do that, I'm going to click on text, basic, go over to opacity, set a keyframe for opacity, go forward about a second. You can see that we're at 602. So I'm just going to drag this over to like 702-ish or so. Yeah, yeah, I can make him a little bit longer even. Drag him over to 702 right there approximately. And then I'm going to turn the opacity down. So this guy, which is going to be blurry, this identify niche is going to be blurry. And then this guy's going to pop up and it's going to over time fade up and show the not blurry version. So we're going to set a keyframe here at the very beginning. And I'm going to make that zero. Boop. Then I'm going to go forward to where this guy ended up right here. And I can see it. I just clicked on it so I can see the keyframes. Click on this guy and drag this guy all the way up to 100. Boop. And that added another keyframe. So you can't see anything yet, but trust me, we're going to need that. So how do I make all of these guys blurry? Well, you would think that you could just go over to video effects and take one of these blurs, motion blurs, and throw it on top, except look what it does. It blurs everything. I only want to blur the words inside the box. You might think that you could just click and drag it on top of this text layer, but you can't do that either. It won't let you. So what you need to do is turn these guys into a graphic or video layer so that CapCut treats it like a graphic or video layer because it treats text differently. To do that, we select all of these guys, not this one because we don't want him blurry. I right click and I choose create compound clip. Now I can modify just these guys, just the text without affecting everything else. Now you don't just drop this on top because it's still blurring everything. But now because it's not text, I can take this motion blur or this lens blur in this case and drop it right on top. And now it will blur everything inside. So it's, it's blurred, but look at the issue. Oh no, the blur is going away. How to make the blur not go away? I want it to be blurry the whole time until you know we get over here. How do I do that? I turn the speed all the way down on this effect, which is lens blur. You can mess with other blur effects as well. This is, I know it's a pro feature. There's other ones that'll work. So we've turned that down. I'm going to turn the range all the way up. I'm going to turn the filters all the way down. And I'm going to turn the blur to somewhere where it looks the most blurry without starting to reveal what's underneath it. So probably right in, I don't know, there. But even there, you can still kind of read it and it's not quite blurry enough. So let's add another blur. Let's add this free one, the motion blur and drag it down here. And it's kind of going a little bit crazy. So we're going to turn the horizontal down till it's right about in the zone. And notice that it's much more blurry. And the reason we need to make it extra blurry is because once we export this, this stuff for some reason gets more sharp and it becomes readable. So we have to blur it a lot here. Now let's watch what happens. If I hit play, remember this stuff is blurry. This stuff is not blurry. It's only this guy here. So keep your eye right here. As soon as we hit that, what's going to happen? What? It gets unblurry, just like what happens with... Isaac's bam blurry to not blurry. Next, we want to add some arrows. Notice that Isaac's got these tiny little arrows in here and I didn't have to create an arrow. There is an arrow that is usable right here in CapCut. I just go to stickers and I type arrow and a bunch of arrows show up and it doesn't have to be the exact arrow, but like this guy works pretty well, even though he's facing the wrong way. We're just going to drag him, position him on top and 
let him last the duration. And we're gonna scale him down considerably and use this guy to rotate him and put him into place and try to make him exactly horizontal like that. And he's still a little bit big, so I'm just going to scale him down a little more. And if you need to do like fine scaling, you just click on this arrow here. Go boom, 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 boom. And I'm gonna position where I want him to be. And he's still too big because he needs to fit in between there just like Isaac does. And down there at about 5% is pretty good. Now he's a small arrow, but you'll be able to see him because I'll all be moving at once. So how do we animate this arrow? Now this is just a little cumbersome, but it's not too bad because we just because we have to do it a bunch of times. So I'm going to bring this guy over here so I can have reference to these boxes because over here I can't see the boxes and I can't position them properly. So what do I want him to do? I want him to start right here, just up here, and then I want him to move forward. So I'm going to position the blade at the beginning of this arrow clip, set a keyframe for position, the only property I'm changing. Go forward about 10 frames. How to go forward 10 frames? It is shift and the right arrow. Bam, goes forward 10 frames. And then I'm gonna move him here so he's in between. Now I'm gonna to start to move him and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key so he stays centered. And then he's gonna be exactly in between these two guys there. And to get rid of the bounding box, what do I do? I just click off him and it looks like that. So let's see what Isaac does. When does he have the arrow start? I'm gonna go over here. Isaac is at 10 seconds exactly just so I can do math easily. And the arrows start right at, they just pop on at right there. Yeah, and they're not faded or anything. They just pop on right there at 1048 at about 48 frames in. So we're just gonna jump into, I don't know, 48 frames in, position that first arrow here, and it looks like this. That's great. Now I just need to do that again for all of these. I'm gonna shorten this guy so he only lasts the duration of this. And the next one will be directly above. Remember, Option or Alt, click and drag to duplicate this. And it's gonna be exactly the same thing as moving that text. I'll do it once, then you do it the other two times. I want to position my playhead at the beginning where I want it to start. And how do I get that guy over there? I can't just move him, just like the text. I need to position my playhead on the keyframe. And I'm gonna move him over here so that other guy's not in the way. Position my playhead on this first keyframe. I'm gonna zoom in a whole bunch so you can kind of see this a little bit better and when this guy ends i want him to be in this space here so i'm just going to click and drag him over hold down the shift key so he stays lined up that's where i want him to end and i want him to start right here so i'm just going to click and drag and hold down the option key and have him start like right there just like the other one and then i'm going to position him in the beginning because all these guys notice with isaac all the arrows move together boom they all come on together and here's these first two Oh, and notice that, that didn't work right, right? What happened? And this is actually really important because this is going to happen to you and I want you to see mistakes so you can actually learn this. You're not just copying me, you're learning what's going on. It's like, oh no, that looked funky, it went up. So the issue is it's on a different Y axis. So I don't know which one's more accurate, the first one or the second one, which one's closer to the other guy. Let's look at this guy and see what Y axis this guy is on so we can be consistent throughout. The position for the Y, the Y is the up and down, X is this way, is minus 72. And when I get over to here, this guy is at minus 75 even he's off. So I'm going to change this guy to minus 72 by just clicking. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this guy, make it minus 72. And I can just highlight it and hit minus 72 and go back to this first guy. And he is at minus 90, not even close, minus 72. So this is how you can make sure things are exact and not just, oh, it looks about right. You want it to be precise. And now if I watch these guys without the box, it looks like this. Yeah. So now, now I'm going to do the same thing for the next two. Now Isaac's entire video is moving all over the place. It's, you know, it's scaling and it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. Now, ideally we'd want to highlight all of these guys, right click and choose create compound clip, but oh no, I can only undo the compound clip. I can't put a compound clip inside a compound clip like you could do in After Effects or Adobe Premiere. So we have to cheat it. We just export this, then we can animate it just the way our man Isaac has done. So to export just this and not Isaac stuff, I need to select this. To select this, I need to make sure that I have something selected that is the exact length I want to go out. I could have it all selected or I could just have this selected. And if I type shift and X on my keyboard, it puts this little out point here and this little in point here and it's gonna just export that. And you can tell that it's selected because it's got this icon here. To make it go away, I could hit cancel right here or I could use the same keystroke that you have in Premiere, which is option X to make the in and the out point go away. Instead of hitting cancel, I just hit option X and bam, the in and the out point go away. So let's hit shift X again and just go ahead and export this and re-import it so that we can animate it just like Isaac does. I'm going to hit export. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it blurry text. 
I'm going to put it in my free folder for you guys. You can have access to it if you don't want to mess with all the stuff I've done. You just want to do this last part, so you'll have access to it. I'm going to hit open and hit export. I'm going to go 4K H.264.mov 60 frames a second because that's what we've been working in. Hit export and it's pretty instant. And I hit cancel. Now we just need to import it. So I'm just going to open up my video graphics folder, click import, jump to our blurry text and hit import. And bam, we no longer need this stuff. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. I'd suggest you, you know, save it and don't wipe it out like I'm about to do. But I'm going to wipe it all out. Bam. Now let's go ahead and drop it into the timeline and animate it. If we look at Isaacs, we see it starts with steps two, three, and four visible. It kind of gives us a reference point. And so I'm going to just zoom in until I get to about that point like that, where I see kind of two, three, and four. And the reason my play is not at the beginning is I wanted to see it all first. So maybe just a tiny bit smaller like that. And now I'm going to position my play hitter. And I know that that's where I want this thing to start. So I'm going to just set a keyframe for everything by clicking this guy right here. I'm going to go forward maybe two seconds. And I can see that I'm at about two seconds here. And I'm just going to scale it down to a hundred, kind of like Isaac does. And if you can't get super precise with the scale, we just hit this guy right here and it's at exactly 100. And then I want this to last until about four and a half seconds, kind of floating around in there. So we're just going to go to four. Remember, four and a half seconds at 60 frames a second is 430. 430 right here and set another keyframe because in between here and here, I don't want it really moving much. It'll be wobbling. We'll do the wobble in a second. I'm going to hit keyframe there. Then I go forward to about 530. Remember, five and a half is 530. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to scale this guy up quite a bit, maybe about like that, and make sure that one is in the kind of dead center. But oh no, this looks terrible. Why does that look so bad? It's got black in the background because we need our gray background. So I'm going to take my gray and drop it down here and drag this guy on top, bring him down and just make him last whole duration. And now because it's the exact right color, this looks great. And maybe I want that over to the left a tiny bit. So, so don't just randomly move it. Make sure your playhead is on the keyframe. So I'm on the keyframe now and I'm going to move him over just a tiny bit. And that looks great about there. And now I want it to be kind of static here for a minute. And at about seven and a half seconds or so, I want to add another keyframe because it's going to another zoom starting here. So I'm setting a keyframe for everything. I'm going to go forward about 20 frames. Remember shift right arrow one, two. And then I'm going to zoom in pretty big and I'm going to have this guy stay centered as much as possible right there. And I'm holding on the shift key so it kind of stays centered and it looks like that. So that's about right. And then after this, it's going to hard cut to the smaller version of that. So I'm just going to go forward maybe one frame and I'm going to cut this hitting command to be on a Mac, control be on a PC. And I'm going to scale this all the way down to 100% like this. 100 just by typing 100 and it's way out in left field we can't even find it if you go oh where'd it go just click on this guy right here and zoom out a little bit we can find it right here bam it's there and i'm going to zoom back in on this this line right here is fill the frame so we leave it there and i want this guy to be in the middle right about there so it should go from zooms up to hard cut just like he does here he goes zooms up and then he goes to a hard cut zoom up bam hard cut to that so we're just doing exactly that and let's look at this right now it's missing a couple things and see if you can think as you watch this think huh what would make this closer to what Isaac is doing here? So in fact, I'm going to just turn the audio off and let you just watch a couple couple seconds of it so you can see what Isaac's is doing. Look, it's kind of moving around a little bit and then bam, it's moving around and you got to feel for what that looks like. Let's look at ours. So, okay, it's going down. Nice. Kind of hit a hard stop. Did you notice that it went hard? hard stop again, not moving at all. And then, you know, it kind of looks okay. What do you think it's missing? It's missing curves. We have linear stops. It's scaling and then scaling more and then hitting a hard edge and turning. How do we fix that? We add curves. To add curves, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this completely. I right click on it and I choose show keyframe animation right here. You can hit option K on a Mac or alt K on a PC. And we have all these curves. What did we change? We changed pretty much everything. We changed X, we changed Y, and we changed scale. It's going to add curves for all of these. I'm going to show you a couple, then you do the rest by yourselves. So scale is already highlighted. Since it's highlighted, I double click on it. And I just click on each one of these keyframes that I've already added. And I just click on auto curve. And it's kind of the safest bet when you start messing with the other options, which are right over here. You know, it starts to get a little wonky usually. You can, I encourage you to mess with it, but know that it's going to be hard to make it smooth when you start messing with it. It is a skill set you have to develop. And at the end, you can sometimes click on these guys like, I can't get to that one. What do I do? I hit this right arrow and now, 
now I can add a curve to them. And down at the beginning, it's the same thing. I can't click, it's too close to the beginning. So I hit this left arrow. And once it's highlighted, I can add the curve, which smooths it out. So it slowly eases out of that position and then slowly eases back into the next position. And I'm going to do that. Well, that was for scale. So it slowly starts to scale and then eases into the scale instead of like an abrupt <clears throat> So let's go ahead and do that for the rest of them. You can watch over the course of the next half a second. As you do the y-axis, I just wanted to mention a couple things. A lot of people are like, oh, CapCut's better, Premiere's better. It's it's not about which is the better app. It's the better app for you and your goals. If you're on social media, you don't want to be an editor when you grow up, CapCut is a better app than Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects for you. You have way more flexibility in Premiere and After Effects. You have much more control over the keyframes, especially in After Effects, but you can get pretty dang close in CapCut and if you do this right, you know, nobody's going to really notice a difference for most things. Yes, you have more options in After Effects, but, but unless you want to spend a ton of time learning After Effects in Premiere, CapCut is going to be great for most people on social media. Now I'm going to close this. I've added the keyframes and I'm going to right click and choose Hide Keyframe Animation. Let's see what it looks like with the curves added. Yeah, look at how it's much smoother. It's gently easing in and then even here it's it's even a little more, it's more gentle. There's one more thing this lacks. Do you know what it is? If you've watched some of my other videos, you know what my favorite filter is, which is, I'm gonna go to effects, it's rebound swing, because it lets things just kind of bounce around a little bit. So I'm gonna just click on this, add a rebound swing to this guy and this guy, and I'm gonna hit this guy so that I can see the options. I'm gonna turn the size down and the speed down for you, and do something similar for you. Turn size and speed down. And now, so it's like it zooms in, it's kind of bounced around a little bit, and then and bam, we're getting really close. Thanks for hanging in there. By the way, if you're getting any value of this, hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment because that's literally my only source of self-esteem. Anyway, let's go ahead and now do the final little finishing touches. He's got this text here and wow, it looks all complicated. The text is changing letters, it's color, it's bright. Like, okay, we're not gonna do that exactly, but we're gonna do something actually really cool. So at about, I'm gonna zoom in here and at about, you know, 310 or so, we're gonna go ahead and add the word enjoy, just like he had. I click on text. I grab this default text, drop it down here. I'll have it last, you know, maybe a second and a half. So we're at 315. So let's go to 415 plus another 30 before 45, which would be a second and a half. Yeah, film math is a pain, right? We know where we want it. Now let's go ahead and type in the word enjoy. Enjoy what you do. Enjoy. It's big, it's beautiful, but it's not big and beautiful enough. We're going to choose Roboto Black Clean. We're going to make it bigger just by dragging it out here. It's kind of an easy way to do it. And let's see where he has his. Is his right in the middle of everything or is his? Let's see. Yeah, it's right over, right in the middle of it. So let's just do the same thing. In fact, it'd be even a little bit lower. It's going to click and drag it down. Bam, like that. Now, Isaacs, we can see animates on all fancy. We're not going to duplicate that exactly. We're just going to make something cool. And we have options in CapCut that you don't have in Premiere, like a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to make sure I'm positioned over that guy. I'm going to make sure he's highlighted. I'm going to go to text, animation, and choose an animation. Now, to choose an animation, you just click on it, and it'll show you what it does. And there's a lot of really cool stuff. Hinge, that's cool, right? Try to do that in Premiere with like one click. Never going to happen. But I'm going to scroll down here to this guy and because it's got some color like Isaac had we're going to use that guy and I just clicked it and bam it added it you can tell it's added because it's got this line here showing how long it lasts and this also shows how long it lasts half a second that's what we want and that's an in animation we want it to leave the screen right here how do we do that we click on out and we choose an out animation this one has some color let's try that yeah kind of boring I don't think it's any better how about this guy yeah that's kind of better so this would look like that yeah, we're getting there. One more thing. We're going to add one more thing that Isaac didn't do in this part of his video, but he does in a lot of his videos. We're just going to add Isaac. Have Isaac tell us to enjoy this. To do that, we go to media. I'm just going to drop Isaac on top here. I'm going to make him last the duration of the text. And I'm going to put the enjoy on top. And I like how CapCut lets you not waste tracks and it automatically collapses any empty ones. And we want this Isaac to show up right about here, maybe. So I'm going to click on Isaac and make him start there. And... Let's go ahead and scale him up. And he's going to put his hand under the word enjoy right there. So let's go ahead and go forward. I don't know, maybe 10 frames. Remember, shift, right arrow, bam. And that's where he's going to end up. So I'm going to set a keyframe for position. Then I'm going to go back 10 frames, shift, left arrow. And I'm going to slide him off the screen. Hold down the shift key so he tries to stay on the same 
y-axis and not go up and down and he looks like that he pops in and is that where you want him does that look good there that's pretty good you know i think i want him to the right a little bit more so he's kind of centered on the enjoy and remember you want to be positioned on the keyframe if i just change him now it's going to mess him up so i'm going to zoom in so i can see the keyframe pretty close and position my playhead on it and i'm just going to back him up so he's kind of more centered there so isaac pops on like this and we wanted to pop off i don't know somewhere around here so i'm going to set a keyframe here where i want him to start to pop off and position is the only thing we're changing so i'm going to click a keyframe for position go forward 10 frames i could hit my arrow and count 10 frames forward or i could hit shift right arrow and then i want isaac to slide off the screen so i'm just going to slide him off the screen hold down the shift key so it kind of locks that y-axis and it looks like this and the only other thing we want really is for him to kind of bobble around a little bit and to ease in and ease out more so i'm going to add curves and i'm going to add rebound swing and then it'll look like this That looks pretty great, but it's lacking voiceover, music, and sound effects. Before I do that and show you the final piece, dude, if you want to figure out how to do this stuff yourself, got to take my course, Master CapCut. You can literally learn how to edit in like two days, so you're not like wandering around scrambling how to do things. Plus, it's the only place you get direct access to me in the discussion section. Ask question, I'll answer all of them. And finally, section two of the course, I teach you what you guys need to do to get views on your videos, because I'm pretty sure most of you aren't getting as many views as you want and I tell you exactly what to do step by step here's what you got to do if you want to get views because most people don't know and they're not doing it so check out my course master cap cut linked in the description below or go to mastercapcut.com and here is our final masterpiece I'll show you the exact method I used to make them go viral <laughs>